Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for the blessings of what you've been doing over these past couple of days. Dear Lord, I pray that everything that we have learned will not be effaced from our minds, dear Lord, and I pray in a very special way that we are taking advantage of the privileges that you're giving to us at this holy convocation. And I pray, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will abide with us in a very, very thick manner. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, um, has everybody been enjoying themselves? You know, um, God really wants to meet with us at these holy convocations. And, you know, a lot of times, especially with these type of events, uh, we tend to spend more time in the meetings than we do with Jesus. Uh, do you think that that is a good thing or a bad thing? That is a very bad thing. I tell you, brothers and sisters, I don't care who is speaking. I don't care if Elijah was preaching. If you have neglected time to spend with God, you need to forego that meeting and spend time with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so uh, this is going to be a part two, uh, minus the, um, the, the three there, but it's going to be part two of our Relief Work series. Now, does everybody remember what we were um, speaking about yesterday? Uh, well, who was here yesterday? Amen, amen. You know, the Lord was uh, speaking to us in a very mighty way, which was a blessing. And so we're going to open up with this particular um, uh, image right here. Does anybody know who this is? Uh, particular uh, person might be an artist rendition of this is Joseph yes it is you know what let's open our Bibles to the book of Psalms the book of Psalms chapter 105 do we all have our Bibles with us amen You know, Joseph was a type of what we should be as Seventh-day Adventists. Now, just as a disclaimer, we have a lot of information to go through in a very short amount of time. I'm not going to try to rush. I'm not going to try to overstuff you. But we need to get through this. We need to get through this. Psalm chapter uh, 105, uh, starting in verse 17, uh, the Bible says, He sent a man. This is um, uh, David through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit going over the history of ancient Israel. In verse 17, it says, He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a what? A servant whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. Now, jumping down in verse 21, it says, He made him lord of his house, speaking of Pharaoh, and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. So was Joseph a very wise man? He was a very, very wise man. Joseph was a problem solver. You know, this was one of the great reasons why the Lord was able to elevate Joseph to the rank and position that he was, was because he was such a great problem solver. Every place that Joseph went, he was solving the people's problems. Uh, when he was in Potiphar's house, was he solving those problems? You know, and it was saying that Joseph was so influential that even Potiphar did not know anything that was going on in his house besides the things that he was eating. But Joseph was a problem solver. He went to the court of Pharaoh and he was able to solve their problems. When he was in the, um, in the dungeon, was he solving the people's problems? Yes. yes, he was. Now, this is taken from uh, volume 6, page 219, uh, paragraph 1. Let's read this together. It says, every institution established by seven-day Adventists is to be to the world with what? What Joseph was in Egypt and what Daniel and his fellows were in Babylon. It says, as in the, yeah, we can stop. It says, as in the providence of God, these chosen ones were taken captive. It was to carry to heathen nations the blessings that come to humanity through a knowledge of God. This is our grandiose purpose as Seventh-day Adventists. We have a very, very high privilege as Seventh-day Adventists. You know, it's something that the Lord really uh, seeks to emphasize in our minds over and over again, is that it's a mighty privilege and a blessing to be a Seventh-day Adventist. You, you know, some people think that it's uh, more um, better to be a member of the Senate. You know, sometimes people think that it's better to be, you know, part of uh, the NBA or the NFL and things like that. But the greatest privilege that any human being can have right now is being a Seventh-day Adventist. And, you know, so many times, especially for our young people, I remember growing up in the Seventh-day Adventist church, I did not understand these truths. 
and I wish that I did. And so many of our young people would be kept from the foolishness and wickedness of this world if they understood their identity as Seventh-day Adventists. If they understood that our young people would not try to imitate people like Chris Brown and LeBron James, they would try to imitate Jesus Christ, Amen. just like Joseph did, just like Joseph did. But going on, uh, bringing in the relief work, it says the messages in these books, speaking of the relief books, contain the what? Light. The light that God has revealed to me to give to the world. So in those two books, in the ministry of healing and a ministry of healing and Christ object lessons, those two books contain the light that God has God gave to Sister White to give to the world. Now, um, there's something very special about it. We're going to bring it out uh, later on. Going on, it says they should teach these truths to their students, speaking of uh, the, the teachers in the schools, and seek to inspire the youth with a love for what? Precious the precious thoughts the Lord has entrusted to us to communicate to the world. So Joseph was a problem solver. So what do you think is the first thing that we should do when trying to engage in the relief work? Do you think the first thing we should do is go out and start canvassing? Pray for direction. That's, that's very good. You know, well, the Lord brought out a principle yesterday that the greater the preparation we have, the better the practice we will be once we finally engage in the work. The greater the practice. So let's notice what inspiration says. It says those who engage in this work, that's, so that's all of us here. Those who engage in this work should first give themselves what? Unreservedly to God. Not reservedly, but unreservedly to God. We should be holding on to nothing that we should be giving to Jesus. Not a sin, not nothing. We need to give ourselves wholly to God. Because if we do not give ourselves wholly to God, can we really be effective? No, no. no we cannot. Do you know um, Peter... You know, he was doing many um, mighty things for God, but was Peter, did he fully give himself to Jesus? Was Peter even converted while he was doing missionary work? Peter was unconverted. And before Jesus went through the trials of Gethsemane, Jesus looked at Peter and said, when you are converted, then, then you will be able to strengthen your brethren. You know, many of us are not strengthening our brethren because we're not converted. We need to be converted, brothers and sisters. It says they should place themselves where they can learn of Christ and follow his example. It says he has invited them what? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Angels are commissioned to go forth with those who take up this work in what? Not fake humility, but true humility. Now, what do you think humility is primarily embodied in? Do you think it's merely in having a soft cadence of voice? You know, because a lot of times when we see certain people, you know, um, maybe if they uh, talk very softly or if they say praise God a lot, we think that they're humble. But is that what the Bible talks about humility is? Now, brothers and sisters, don't get me wrong. That's a part of it. But true humility is found in strict obedience to the word of God. That is humility. Going on, this says... The students who take up the work of selling Christ Object Lessons, you can just take out students and put your name. And Ministry of Healing will need to do what? Study the book. They need to study the book they expect to sell. Now, these are the two books right here. The Wisdom of the Great Physician and The Greatest Lessons of Life. Now, I remember when I first started canvassing, um, I didn't know the principles that you need to know for canvassing. Like, for instance, when I first started canvassing, I would canvass Great Controversy, you know, Peace About the Storm, which is Steps to Christ, and a lot of other books, but I didn't study them. And so I didn't know what was actually contained in them. So do you think I could give a proper testimony to those books? No, I can't. I couldn't. It says, as they familiarize their minds with the subject matter of the book in hand. So do you think you can familiarize your mind with it simply by trying to skim through it really quickly to get out on the field? No. You need time to spend with the books. You need time to spend with the books. <laughs> and endeavor to do what? Right. To practice its teachings. They will develop in knowledge and spiritual power. So if the wisdom of the great physician... Um, for instance, if you turn to uh, chapter 9, for instance, 
chapter 9, or chapter 8 rather, there's a passage in chapter 8 and it talks about how disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. So say for instance, you have a disease, but yet you don't follow this biblical step to overcome your disease. Are you really practicing his teachings? No, no you're not. Let's go to another passage. In this same uh, book, if you turn to, now this is an extreme example, but there's a chapter in here called Liquor Traffic and Prohibition. If you are drinking, can you truly canvas this book? No, no you can't. No, you cannot. Let's, yes. Mm. That, that is very, very true. That's very true. Um, like, for instance, uh, milk and sugar. Milk and sugar. Did anybody, did anybody know that? Mm -hmm. the, the combination of the two. Yes, it's, it's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a chapter in here uh, called The Builders of the Home. The Builders of the Home. I'll read to you a passage from here. It says, before assuming the responsibilities involved in marriage, young men and young women should have such an experience in practical life as will prepare them for its duties and burdens. So if we are young people canvassing these books and we're not following that principle in, the, in relation to courtship and marriage, can we truly canvass that book? No, we cannot. No, we cannot. So going on, it says the teachers in our school should encourage the students to make a what? Not a speedy study, but a careful study of what chapter? Every, chapter? Every single chapter. Does anybody know how many chapters the Ministry of Healing has? It has 42 chapters. Does anybody know how many chapters Christ Object Lessons has? It has 29. So do you think it's going, you're going to uh, speedily go through that? No. You need to take time to do it because the greater time you spend in studying the book is the more effective you will be the more effective you will be it says thus the preparation for handling these books and the daily experiences gained while bringing them to the attention of the people so it's a twofold work will prove an invaluable schooling to those who take part in this line of effort it says under the blessings of god the youth will obtain a fitting up for service in the what vineyard in the lord's vineyard Moving on, does anybody know what this is a picture of? This is a current picture of the crisis that is going on right now in Aleppo, Syria. Has, does anybody know what's going on in Syria right now? A lot of catastrophic things. It's really bad over there. Now, we're bringing this out for a particular purpose because the understanding of this principle is very vital before we do any type of missionary work. And just as a reminder, what we're doing today, we're going over the practical things that you need to do in order to get involved in the relief work. Now, this is Aleppo. Does anybody have any idea where this might possibly be? Ethiopia. Ethiopia. It, it is it's Ethiopia. Amen. So it's in Africa. These are some beautiful children here. Wonderful scenery in the background. Does anybody uh, know where this might be? India. This is India. Does anybody know where this might be? America. Specifically. Somebody said it. Chicago. Chicago. Now, do you think that these brethren right here in Chicago need the relief work? Yes. Yes, yes they do. There is a, again, talking about problem solving, there is a chapter in here that would solve this problem. Does anybody know what chapter it is? Which book is that? This is Ministry of Healing or the Wisdom of the Great Physician. Working for the Tempted. Working for the Tempted? I have something a little bit better than that. A little bit better. <laughs> if you open up, um, now I love the title of this chapter, how it was reworded. It's called Chapter 28, A Functional Home in a Dysfunctional Society. Mm. That's powerful. I'm going to read to you the solution to this problem right now. It says, our home should be a place of refuge for the tempted youth. Many there are who stand at the parting of the ways. Every influence, every impression is determining the choice that shapes their destiny, both here and hereafter. It says, evil invites them. Its resorts are made bright and attractive. They have a welcome for every comer. All about us are youth who have no home. 
and many whose homes have no helpful uplifting power and the youth drift into evil. It says the youth need a hand stretched out to them in sympathy. Kind words simply spoken, little attention simply bestowed will sweep away the clouds of temptation which gather over the soul. Finally, it says, if we would show an interest in the youth, invite them to our homes and surround them with cheerful, helpful influences, there are many who will gladly turn their steps into the upward path. The solution to every problem in life. And the reason why these two books are very special, now there's a heading at the beginning of this book and it's called the How to Live series. The reason why these two books are so very special is because they teach you literally how to live. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the major reasons why there's so many problems in the world is because the world literally does not know how to live. They don't know how to eat, drink, marry, give in marriage, and live. They don't know how to live. And God has given us the principles as Seventh-day Adventists, and we have a duty to share it with the world. This is a passage from the book Education. It says... It is acquaintance that awakens sympathy, and sympathy is the spring of what? Effective, Effective ministry. To awaken in the children and youth sympathy and the spirit of sacrifice for the suffering millions in the regions beyond, let them become acquainted with these lands and their what? So before you do missionary work, you need to become acquainted with the territory that you're working. It's very important. Now, do you think that Jesus understood the territory that he was coming to before he became incarnate? Yes, he did. He knew everything about the world before he came to the world. It says, in this line, much might be accomplished in our schools. Instead of dwelling on the exploits of the Alexanders and the Napoleons of history, let the pupils study the lives of such men as the Apostle Paul and Martin Luther as Moffat and Livingston and Carey and the present daily unfolding of history of history of missionary effort does anybody know who these people are right here now i know we might know who martin luther is but does anybody know who mofat is that's a blessing that's a blessing okay it says instead of burdening their memories with an array of names and theories that have no bearing upon their lives and to which once outside the schoolroom, they rarely give thought. You know, this really, we used to talk about this all the time when we were in school. Like we'd be in math class and you know, different classes. And we would say all the time, we're never going to use this. We're never going to use this. But if we would study them properly, you know, and especially if we would study things like history in light of the plan of redemption, these subjects will become so interesting to our young people. Imagine if our young people studied math and chemistry and biology in light of the plan of redemption. Do you think they'd be interested in it? Oh, yeah. Very much so. It says, let them study all lands in the light of missionary effort and become acquainted with the peoples and their what? And their needs. So one of the things, please, please write this down. One of the things that is very essential before you do missionary work is to study the needs of the people that you're going to be working with. So when you go back to whatever state you might have gone to or maybe whatever country you might have come from, you need to study the needs of that country and that territory so that you can minister to them properly. All of this preparatory work might seem un unessential, but it is very, very necessary. Very necessary. Okay. Does anybody know what this is a picture of right here? This is a canvassing bag. These are some canvassing books, and this is a radio. This is a radio. Yes, yeah, some, some glow charts right there. This is from Fundamentals of Christian Education. It says, wherever the work of selling Christ object lessons has been taken a hold of in earnest, the book has done what? Very good. And the lessons that have been learned by those who have engaged in this work have well repaid their efforts. And now our people should all be encouraged to take part in this what? Special, it's not just a missionary effort, but it's a special missionary effort. Light has been given me that in every possible way instruction should be given to our people as to the what? Best the best methods of presenting these books to the people. So right now we're going over the best methods to present these books to the people. Now, 
I would love if we had about maybe five more sessions to really dig deep into this, but we don't have a lot of time. So what I'm going to do right now is give you some tools, some practical tools so that you can get involved in this. Now, one of the first things that we're going to go over, I'm just going to have time to write them down and demonstrate them a little bit. We're going to um, illustrate what is called the basic five of canvassing. Does anybody know what that is? All right, we have one person, two people who know what that is, three people, four people, okay. The basic five. The basic five. So the basic five, what this is talking about are the things that you do when you go out into the field to canvas, go out into the field to canvas. Number one is when you're canvassing in the community, you want to walk fast. You want to walk fast. You want to be on a mission. You don't want to waste time strolling and uh, lolly-dallying between uh, houses and things like that. You want to walk fast, be on a mission. Because, you know, when you go into the community, everybody that you meet is not going to buy the books. Some people are going to be very nasty and mean with you when you try to reach them. So walking fast helps to alleviate things like discouragement. Because when you're walking fast, it takes your mind off of those things that, you know, were going on. So walk fast. Number two, can somebody tell me what number two is for those who have done it before? Smile. Walk fast, smile. Now, why do you think smiling is important? Quickly, quickly. The joy of the Lord is your strength, so it's probably there too. Yes, yes. Smiling is, yes. It engenders fellowship. Yes, it engenders fellowship. Yes, it does. Um, smiling is very, very important. It really helps to boost the immune system. It helps to bring a wonderful atmosphere into the place. And so smiling is very important. So walk fast, smile. Number three. It's book in the hand. So as you're canvassing, you want to be very intentional with how you present the books to the people. You know, because a lot of times when we're not very confident in what we're doing, you know, we, you want to take a look at, but you want to be very intentional. You want to, here, take a look at what we're doing. And you want to take it. And so you want to be very intentional with what, the, with what you're doing. So walk fast, smile, book in the hand. You want to know your canvas. You want to know your, now we're going to give you a mock canvas that by the grace of God will help you to give you a template as to what you can say when you meet the people. And five, not lastly, but prayer. Now, which one of these five do you think is the most important? Prayer. Yeah, it's his prayer. <laughs> it's prayer. So prayer is vitally essential. It's vitally essential. You know, it's, it's possible to walk slow, to have a, a somber look on your face, to be lackadaisical in how you place the book in their hand, and to not know anything of the canvas. And because of prayer, the Lord can override all of this. But in the plan of redemption... Um, the plan of redemption teaches that God is not going to save man in spite of himself. There's a work of cooperation. So it's not only God, but it's man as well working together. Now, is it by our power that these books get out? No. It's God's power. But do we have a part to play? Yes. Yeah. So this basic five gives us the ability by the grace of God to help play our part. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Amen. Did everybody write that down? We can possibly demonstrate this at the end of the um, at the end of the session. The best methods of presenting these books to the people. All right. It says if these precious volumes are appreciated as they should be self-denying efforts. And that's that word self-denying again. We the Lord really wants us to practice more self-denial, more self-denial. It says we'll be made to bring them to the notice of the people. It says, let brethren and sisters encourage one another to do what? Become acquainted with their neighbors. This is a wonderful way to become acquainted with our neighbors. You know, because a lot of times, you know, many of our neighbors will literally be lost in hell because we did not minister to them. That's serious. 
it says, tell them the story of these. So what this is illustrating right now is once you tell the people, once you start canvassing these two books, it says, tell them the story of these gifts, of the gift of these books for the support of our institutions. So as you go out and canvass, you're literally going to be telling the people why you're doing it. Number two, it says, tell of your own interests in seeking to place them in the hands of acquaintances and friends. Now, brothers and sisters, it's very important that we say this specifically because uh, there's passages that talk about that when we uh, communicate to the people the purpose of why we're doing it, that angels will literally impress their minds to give of their means for this work. I remember one time uh, we were actually doing this in the community earlier this year, and um, the couple who was going out and canvassing, uh, they came across a young man and, and they were telling him why they were doing this work. You know, well, we have a health institution and a missionary training school. And as they communicated to, to him the purpose of it, he said, you know what? This is the work of God. I want to give of my means for this. And he said, it's not a lot of money that I have, but I want to give something. And right there, he just took out a check and wrote it for $150, just like that. And so simply by communicating to them why you're doing it, the people will be moved to give of their means. Because you can sit down with a very wealthy man and tell him why you're doing this, and God can impress him and have you have him write you a check for $50 million. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, God wants to pour out abundant blessings upon his people. It says, tell the story to the wealthy. Men, women, and children can engage in this work. And so even if you wouldn't be a good canvasser, you could actually be very, very good at the relief work. Very, very good at it. It says, we have yet to learn of persons who, after reading these books, have expressed unfavorable opinions regarding them. Now, this is taken from Review and Herald, 1902, paragraph 16. Now, really, really focus in on this. It says, the Lord comes very near the workers and angels go before them. My brethren and sisters, never forget whose company you are in. So whose company are we in? The presence of angels. Now, are angels uh, little weaklings? They're not weaklings. I remember when the, well, I don't remember, but I was reading when the angel Gabriel came to awaken Jesus from his tomb. Does anybody ever remember that account? And, you know, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy paint the, it paints it so beautifully that when he came, while he was approaching the earth, that he came with so much power that it literally caused an earthquake. It literally caused an earthquake. And these are the types of beings that are guarding us and encouraging us to reach the people. We have some very powerful friends. It says, see by faith an angelic host around you, just like Elisha did. Believe that the Lord Jesus is by your side, that his glory enfolds you, that he is pouring upon you the refreshing showers of his grace. It says, speak and act to the glory of God. Say in thought, word, and deed, I will be a blessing to those I meet. I will let light shine forth. Number one, it says, so as we meet the people, this is what we want to do. Enter into conversation with the people. So we need to mingle with them. Number two, become familiar with their experience. So one of the things that you want to do, you want to do things like, um, let me write this down. What are some of the things that you, uh, some of the things that you can ask to get acquainted with people? Family. Yes. Occupation. Recreation. What else? Hobbies. Uh, nature. So these are just a few examples of things that you can ask people to, to culture to become acquainted with them. Yes, yes. And so, you know, because there's an there's a art to mingling. You know, Jesus, he never had um, unintentional conversations with anybody. You know, a lot of times, you know, um, we talk about things like having small talk. You know, just uh, saying things just to avoid awkwardness. You know, sometimes we come into contact with people and we almost feel like we, we have to say something, let it, lest they get, you know, silent and everybody get kind of weird. But um, do you think Jesus ever had uh, awkward moments? Never. He never had awkward moments. He was very intentional with everything he said. It says, and number three, and from the book you are selling, read passages that will help them. So just like we did 
when the people start to talk to you about their problems and things like that, because you have become familiar with the content of the book, you can go inside of the book and read to them the solutions to their problems. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes sense. Okay, it says, take with you into their homes the sunshine of heaven. Outside of the truth, there is little enough of this sunshine now in the world. Now, this is when Sister White was living. Now, the world is especially dark right now. Especially dark right now. You know, the Bible says, because iniquity shall abound, that the love of many shall wax worth. Cold. Very, very cold. It says, let those who handle Christ's object lessons pray in what? Faith. Faith. Now, notice this. Carefully improve the opportunities to sow the seeds of truth. Let's read this together. Do not introduce doctrinal subjects, nor engage in controversy. Now, why do you think it's important not to introduce doctrinal subjects? Now, what type of doctrinal subjects uh, do you think it's speaking of? Do you think it's talking about the second coming of Jesus? No. Sabbath, state of the dead, the 2300 days, investigative judgment, uh, sanctuary, things. Like now, by the grace of God, are we trying to get them to that point? Yes. yes. But is that the first thing that you speak of? No, that's not the first thing that you speak of. Now, do you think you're going to have a good confidence with the people if that's the first thing you introduce to them? No. Now, don't get me wrong. There are certain special situations when the Lord will have you do that. And I've been in those situations before, but that's not the general rule. It says, but speak of the Christian's faith and hope. What is the Christian's faith and hope? Heaven. The second coming of Jesus. Jesus. It says, thus, so if you don't introduce the doctrinal subjects, you become friendly and introduce only those softer points of, of the Christian faith. It says, you will become acquainted with persons whom you may afterwards visit, Bible in hand, and upon whom you may reflect the light which God has given to you. So what this will do, it will give you more opportunities to be able to witness and minister to them. It says, you will find opportunities to comfort the depressed and discouraged and to lift up those that are bowed down. Moving along, moving along. Now, does everybody remember uh, this picture right here? This is an image of a city who needs the relief work. And so um, we went through a lot of these different things that our cities, um, they need work, that we as Seventh-day Adventists are asleep. But by the grace of God, God is waking us up. Uh, we went over that uh, the three institutions that God has ordained to be in the country, especially, specifically, the school, sanitarium, and publishing house. Um, though, that's how God designed that the cities should be worked from the outpost centers. Um, we read this a little bit, the houses of worship, memorials for God. Okay. This is uh, speaking about uh, the relief work some more. It says, uh, but there is need of means to carry the work forward successfully it was God's purpose that by the sale of ministry of healing and Christ object lessons, much means. Now, what means is this talking about? This is talking about raisins. No, this is not talking about anything. This is not talking about uh, dresses or anything like that. This is talking about money, 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 money. Money should be raised for the work of our what? Senate terms in schools. It says if our people will now engage in the sale of these books as they ought, we shall have much more what? means or money to carry the work in the way the Lord designed the way the Lord designed all right does anybody know what this is a picture of right here now we are coming to a close yes yes um, this is um no not Elm Shaven this is um this is a uh, sunny side in Avondale oh, okay. this was sister White's home in Avondale now, I'm going to give you a small account of some missionary work that um, God's people were doing over in Avondale and the results of what they were doing as they started to mingle in the community. Now, brothers and sisters, let's, you know what? Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Revelation. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Revelation. Because we as Seventh-day Adventists, especially as Seventh-day Adventists who believe present truth, we believe that a crisis is coming. Isn't that right? Yeah. And so we believe that soon church and state are going to unite to persecute God's people. So Revelation chapter 13, starting verse 15, the Bible says, when you have it, say amen. amen. 
and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now, who is that he that this is talking about? Satan. This is the two horned beast. This is America. This is America. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both what? Speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be what? And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might what? Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and what? And six. So in light of this crisis of the buying and selling of the enforcement of a national Sunday law, we're going to read a particular account of missionary work taking place over in um, Australia. It says, while we were living at Korenbong, where the Avondale School is established, the question of what came up? Amusements. amusements came up. You know, a lot of times our young people, they want to be amused all the time. It said, amusements came up for consideration. It says, what shall we do to provide for the amusement of our students? Now, do young people need amusement? Yes. Yes. It says, um, the faculty inquired, we talk matters over together, and then I came before the students and said to them, we can occupy our minds and our time profitably by trying to devise methods for amusing ourselves. Oh, without trying, yes, yes, thank you. Instead of spending time in playing the games that so many students play, like basketball and football and all these things, strive to do what? Something for the master. Something for the, master. the very best course for you to pursue is to engage in what? Missionary. Missionary work for the people. Now, so what this is saying is that the best course to pursue as far as the amusements for the young people is to engage in missionary work for the people in the neighborhood and in nearby settlements. Now, brothers and sisters, this is not saying that there are not times where we just need to take apart from everything and just, you know, go into nature and to fellowship. That's not what this is talking about. It goes on to say, whenever you are listening to an interesting discourse, take notes and so on and so forth, then after faithful study, you will soon be able to give a synopsis of the discourse in the form of Bible readings to some who do not come to our meetings. So this is um, Sister White encouraging the young people to engage in missionary work in the neighborhood and in nearby settlements. It says, to o the older students decided to follow this suggestion, so the older students took the initiative upon themselves to start engaging in this. It says, they had evening meetings for studying the what? That's, that's a blessing, young people studying the Bible. It says, they work first of all for one another. So first you start with those around you in your home, in your institution. And as a result of the Bible studies among themselves, a number of the unconverted were one to the truth. You know, a lot of times, even when our young people go to missionary training schools, even some of the young people there are not converted. You know, that's true. Amen. And so the first work that needs to be done is amongst ourselves, amongst ourselves. And the effort in behalf of their neighbors was a blessing not only to themselves, but to those for whom they labored. Those who went out to work for their neighbors were instructed to report any case of sickness they might find. So write this down. As you go out into the community with these books and you become acquainted with the people, write down any case of sickness that you find. Write down any case of sickness. It says... And those who had had training in giving treatment to the sick were encouraged to use their knowledge in a what? In a practical way. So if you know how to use charcoal, you know how to do hydrotherapy. Um, a quick uh, pop quiz. If somebody is having a heart attack, what is a natural remedy that you can use to help stop that? Cayenne pepper, Cayenne pepper where? Under the, Under the tongue. So if you're you know, canvassing the relief books and somebody pops and they boom and they start having a heart attack, what should you do? having your little uh, medical missionary kit right next to you. Put some cayenne pepper under the tongue. Do you think that they'll be willing to buy those books once you just save their life? Oh yes, <laughs> yes they will. 
It says, to work for the master came to be regarded as what? Christ-like recreation. <laughs> so, to do missionary work was regarded as recreation. So it wasn't basketball and football and running track. It was doing missionary work for Jesus. You know, our mindset in regard to what is proper needs to radically change. We've become so assimilated to the world that these things are literally strange to us. You're telling me that missionary work is recreation? Are you serious? But this, this is what Jesus says, you know, because Sister White was only the penman. It was the Holy Spirit who, who told her to do this. He's not a person. Now, who is this particular fellow right here on a more serious note? Martin Luther said that this man, the Pope of Rome, is the apostle of the devil. That's what he said. And a lot of times we are kissing up to this particular man right here. Um, he is the leader of that mass system of deception. Now, do you think that this man has largely to do with the winding up of this earth's history? Yes, that's what the book of evangelism says. Now, notice what happened as a result of the missionary work that they were doing in light of the passing of Sunday Blue Laws. After a time, the Sunday labor question came up for consideration. It says, it seemed as if the lines were soon to be drawn so tightly about us that we should not be able to do what? It says, our school was situated in the what? In the heart. So they were literally away from everybody. Now, brothers and sisters, back then, they did not have cell phones. They did not have satellite. So even if we're in the heart of the woods now, are they, can they still watch us and things like that? Yes, yes. That's why the Bible says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Does anybody know what God's secret place is? It starts with a D. The Bible says that God's secret place is the darkness is the darkness it says far from any village or railway station no one was living near enough uh, near enough to be disturbed in any way by anything we might do so the ideal is to be in the heart of the woods that's the ideal it says nevertheless we were watched so even back then they were being watched do you think they're watching us now y yes they are now do we need to be in a state of paranoia no, no we don't it says the officers were urged to observe that we were do uh, what we were doing on the school premises and they did come, but they did not appear to notice those who were at work. Their confidence and respect for our people had been so won by the work we had done for the sick in that community. So as we go out and do the relief work and we minister to the sick and we do all these things, when this national Sunday law is about to be passed, what's going to happen as a result of all that work that we were doing in all of the communities of America and the world? We'll be guarded up until a certain point of time. You know, it was just like that for Jesus. Because he was ministering to the people so much, every time the religious leaders wanted to grab him, they were afraid to do it because they were afraid of the wrath of the people afraid of the wrath of the people like for instance you know a lot of people that live in the country especially around here uh they love the second amendment now what is the second amendment the right to bear arms, the right to bear arms. now i'm not advocating that anybody should have a uh, a weapon on them but it's a right in this country and it's a beautiful right and um the second amendment was not put in there for duck hunting it was for other reasons but um the second amendment so say for instance you go to a person who has a shotgun and certain artillery arms and things like that and you uh, save their child from dying. And so somebody comes to where you live and everything and they start to threaten you. What do you think that person with a shotgun is going to do? He's going to defend you. He's going to defend you. And so it says that they did not wish to interfere with our harmless labor on Sunday. So we're going to go to great controversy and close here. It says, so should the followers of Christ, as they approach the time of trouble, make every exertion to place themselves in a what? Right. In a proper light before the people to disarm prejudice and to avert the danger which threatens liberty of conscience. 
So besides doing a work in the church and the world, this is going to help to break down prejudice so when the crisis gets nearer and nearer, we will be put in a proper light before the people. A proper light before the people. Did everybody get, get what was uh, being told today? Amen. Did it make sense? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for speaking to our hearts and our minds. You want to do such uh, miraculous things with us at this closing juncture of verse history. Dear Lord, I pray in a very, very special way that you would please the Lord. Give us your strength to work in cooperation with you in this. I pray, dear Lord, that everyone here will get involved in it because uh, there's a quotation, dear Lord, that tells us that in this particular work, that our greatest burden should not be the raising of funds, but the salvation of souls. Amen. And so, dear Lord, I pray in a very special way that the burden of souls will be upon our hearts so that we can do this work in earnest and help to finish your work. Please keep us to this and we pray in Jesus' name.